Hey everybody, it's Scott Central Simple Spring Service and today I'm going to actually be doing some retooling for block manufacturing. Um, you're probably familiar with the blocks that we made in our one of our last videos here. And once I got the video edited and published, we actually only have 40, 40 of those blocks left. Which is 10 kits, which isn't very much. So, we have to produce blocks faster. And that was the issue I kind of discussed a little bit in the last video is that we had somewhere between 53 and 58 hours of fabrication time on the last set of blocks. So I need to be able to make twice as many blocks in half the amount of time. So one of those ways is some retooling. So I'll just unbox all this stuff for you and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so some of the parts I got here was a 14 millimeter drill bit, specifically 14 mil, because it's just under 9 sixteenths. We're gonna use this for accurate drilling, and I need it to be exactly 14 mil. So about a chamfering tool, so I can get rid of any kind of like burrs when I'm doing any kind of drilling, and then I'll clean it up really nicely. And I figured I'd get a tool for it instead of just using a different size drill bit. That's the first time I've used a chamfering bit, and I'm interested to see how it works. So I bought a vise so I can actually clamp this down to my deck and if I line it up to the edge of the vise I can have repeatable results and I'm gonna get a little stopper so I can just load the blocks in up against the stopper, clamp it, and then when I'm done just unclamp, pull it out, put, pull it out and put the next one in. Boom, ready to go. I think this will save on fatigue and I think it'll save on repeatable results because I'm going to make a template block with a hole in the middle, have my live center to get me the exact same point every single time, and then as I load blocks in, I'll get the exact same hole every single time, no marking, no punching, and the drilling will be done by the drill press and I won't have to hold onto this because this will be clamped right down to my, right down to my drill press. <laughs> One of the funniest things I find in life is when you think you can just walk up to a drill press and just start fabbing parts and everything's going to be okay. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a complete lie. Um, I started filming this video probably five months ago. So let's actually go through the reality of, um, you know, doing an actual setup and manufacturing parts. So we have actually probably fabricated about five or 600 blocks since I first started shooting this video. Um, a lot of lessons have been learned, a lot of uh, 
little things have been changed, adapted to. So we'll actually go through how we do our setup now and why I had to change things and we'll go from there. So first thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually mount our vise to the table here and get it set up. So all these milling tables actually take uh, T-bolts, which I did not purchase. I actually just took some uh, flanged bolts that we use for uh, mounting brackets to frame rails on transport trucks. And I just uh, sanded the sides down and I ground some of the top off and then they just slide into here like so. So we'll get our vise on here. It goes like so, that goes in there, that goes in there, and then we'll tighten them down. So I didn't know anything about fixture plating or setting up uh, jigs or you know duplicatable results, uh, templates or anything like that. So. So when I first started making these blocks, I didn't know that you could actually set up jigs to make them all square every single time. So I was using a square, like a literal square to square them up. But the problem is you can have like a sixteenth of an inch of difference every single time that you mount the bracket. Plus you have to bring your square in, square it up, stuff like that. It's horrible. Plus, if you're repeating it like, you know, two or three hundred times or six hundred times, you do not want to have to do that same setup over and over again. So we came up with another option. So you can actually buy these. This one was about 60 bucks and I modified it so I can get my wrenches and ratchets on it and stuff like that and adapt it to my table. So I can slide that in there like that. Get my block in here square it all up and tighten it. So there you go. Now that that's set up, I can now load these blocks in one times, two times, or 200 times, and they will all end up in the exact same position every single time. Load it up, lock it down, drill the hole, go from there. So once I figured out this setup, it just became infinitely easier. We just load the blocks in, we drill a hole, load the block in, drill the hole. So now what we'll do is we'll find the center on this block and we will get the machine set up for drilling. So figuring out the center on this block is actually fairly easy. It's one and three quarter inches, which ends up being seven eighths or basically uh, 875 thou. Set my calipers, I tighten it, and then I just scratch a scribe line. And I'm off. 875. Not 785. Bloody hell. Anyhow, well, worst case scenario, that helps you find center too. I scratch it from both sides. Make my scratch line. Make my scratch that way. And even if I'm out, I just find the center between the two lines. Then I set my indicators at two inches because the block is four inches long. And I scratch a line this way. That's really hard to see, but I can see it in the, in the light behind me. And I will take and mark it right in that spot. So this is gonna be our template block and we'll go back to the uh, milling machine and we'll get the uh, X, Y axis all set up. So now I can actually adjust my table to get the center hole lined up. Wow, that's pretty good. So basically, so basically what I'm looking for is the scratch lines that the drill makes is symmetrical to the center mark punch. 
And once I have found that, then basically my table's set up and now I can drill all my blocks. So I find that insanely easy. So let's go and drill the blocks out and we'll get a couple of main. So a couple things that's really cool about my new drill press I just bought. Uh, we can actually go from drilling spring steel, which is what we were drilling earlier today, and we can actually set it up for drilling out um, these lift blocks. So I just switch it to high, and then I switch it to one, and now I'm ready for drilling blocks. It's that simple. So there we go one hole is drilled now what i can actually do is set up my machine for the next hole which is 14 millimeters so another thing that's hugely important about getting repeatable results is uh i can't fit my drill bit in here take the block out install the drill bit Put the block back in and it's in the same spot so good to go That's our final hole size, and then what we're going to do is switch this side over and give it a little chamfer. A little chamfering bit. There you go. Nice and uh, symmetrical. Everything is symmetrical. It works out really nicely. So now that we got this drilled out, uh, we'll go over to my 100 ton press and we're going to press a little uh, pin in the bottom of it. So what we do is we cut these little uh, pins out and now we're going to press these into here. And they are about a ten thousandths of an inch uh, too big for the hole. So it's quite a pressure fit in there. Uh, once they go in, they don't come back out again. Now I need them exactly that deep, so I have a little uh, spacer here, so we're going to press it in until it's the right depth, and then that's it, it's good to go. So there you go, pressed in. And with 100 tons of force, I mean, it probably didn't take that much, probably took like 25 tons of force. Um, it's probably not gonna come out of there anytime soon. So pretty cool. So now I got a trailer lift block made. 
So you're all probably thinking that looks insanely easy and uh, that was kind of the whole point of it. Uh, when, if you look at the last video, um, we basically were spending about a half an hour per block to cut, grind, and weld them together. And it was very, very labor intensive. It was hard on the hands and trying to get uh, duplicated results perfectly every single time was uh, a challenge. So what I needed to do was I needed to make twice as many blocks in half the amount of time for it to become even more viable as a product. The other option was to increase the price a lot. So um, so you can actually get these uh, trailer lift blocks on our website at simclospring.com and we've actually broken them down fairly simply for you. You can get them uh, for a single axle trailer, a tandem axle trailer, or for a tri-axle trailer and then you just basically select which U-bolts you want. So most U-bolts are half inch. You can also get them in 9 16 if you either want an upgrade or if you got a heavy trailer and they require a 9 16 U-bolts. Uh, just make sure that when you measure the U-bolts you measure them on the threads. Uh, the thread is the most important part and that's where the nut goes on so that's where we measure it. Uh, the other thing that you need to measure is the axle diameter. Uh, most common axles are 2 and 3 8 diameter or 3 inch diameter. So once you pick that then you can select your block kit that you're looking for and we can get them shipped out. We get these lift blocks out very quickly now and we always have them in stock now and we're not scrambling to try to keep them in stock. So thanks for everybody who's purchased a kit already. I uh, really appreciate it. It's been quite an adventure and it's actually been able to help us afford to replace some of the uh, old uh, beat up equipment that we had in the shop. Uh, this is a new drill press. We actually just uh, installed it a couple of days ago and being able to use it to drill out these lift blocks and for all the other manufacturing we do around our shop is uh, pretty damn cool. So <laughs> thanks everybody for watching. Thanks everybody for supporting us. Uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, like the video, uh, subscribe if you feel like it. I appreciate everybody. Uh, thanks again. And uh, so we're just going to do a little time lapse for you and we're going to fab up a couple of blocks. So now I know I gotta press the pins in yet, but that's all four blocks drilled, nine minutes, 20 seconds with four drill bit changes and uh, 20 fixture changes. But because it's always a repeatable result, there are no fixture changes anymore. So uh, yeah, pretty good setup. Uh, huge shout out to Abom79. I really appreciate it. I contacted him about coolant and a few other things and he was super helpful uh, figuring that out. Uh, watching his channel helped me figure out the process of doing this type of setup uh, to have repeatable results. So I really appreciate uh, other content creators like that. And uh, if you're following me and you're not following him, you should go over to his channel and give him a follow because uh, it's a lot more informative and a lot more experience than I am in this type of stuff. So anyhow, thanks guys. Take care and I'll catch you next time. All right, bye.